All right, my friends, time for some myth busting. So you ready? So I'm going to be a little controversial here at the beginning, but I think when we get to the end of this eight or nine minutes, you're going to see the truth, hopefully. And not only that, but hopefully this will help make you some more money. So there is a common teaching in options that you should buy options when implied volatility is low. The reasoning is that Volatility is priced into the multifaceted pricing model of options, and therefore you buy them cheap. And then when you want to sell options, doing a selling strategy, whatever it is, then you want to sell when implied volatility is high because you're selling the options to get a credit and you want to get as much credit as possible. So you want that option to be priced high. Okay, so is that a truth? Well, it's a half truth. So I'm not going to say it's completely wrong, but it's wrong enough to make you lose money. It is not, well, here in the U.S., when you go to a court of law and if you're going to be a witness in a legal case and you sit on the witness stand, they don't just make you put your hand on a Bible and say, do you promise to tell the truth? Oh, no, they don't let you get away with that because they know that, well, human beings can hedge around the truth and especially if you're a politician. So <laughs> they say, no, 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 you must say, do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Well, we need to apply that to trading as well because it's really important, the details. The details are where the money is made. There's a lot of big general statements like these two I just gave you with options that can lose you a truckload of money because they're too simplistic. Um, there's an ancient Chinese saying that I just made up and that is that the dollars are in the details. That's where the dollars are. So where does it come in with implied volatility and with options? So here's the dealio, my friends. So let's say that we've got, well, here's a um, chart of volatility and volatility is relative. A lot of people like to put numbers to it and that's, that's fine. But really um, the best way to look at it is it's all relative. So here we've got uh, low volatility, you know, in this zone and over in this zone, relative low volatility. And over here we got high volatility. Okay, so we're going to just look at it in general terms today because we only got a few minutes for this video. So generally people would say, well, you should be buying while volatility is low. Uh, but let's think about that for a second. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let's apply some logic and some reason. When volatility is low, what does that mean? That means that the market is not moving very much. The market, the price swings of whatever instrument you're trading is not making large swings. So why would you want to buy a low volatility market, stock, future, whatever, when it's not moving? And when you buy an option, you're paying for that. You're paying a debit and you got to overcome that debit before you make money. So that puppy's got to move, right? That got, puppy's got to have some wheels to mix metaphors. Uh, and so if there's a contradiction in the concept itself, so just buying options with low volatility because they're cheap is not the right approach. First of all, not only is it not the only thing you need to consider, it's not even the most important thing you need to consider. There's a contradiction in the philosophy. Low volatility markets are making small moves and therefore it's going to be really hard to make money buying low IV options. All right. So that, so what is the key? What is the key? The key is the trend of implied volatility. Let me pull up a different chart here and show you exactly what I mean. So here is the key. This is what I look for when I'm buying options. And by the way, contrary to what a lot of people say, I love buying options, I like selling them too, but I actually prefer buying them because I make more money. So here we have relatively low implied volatility. Okay, we get a swing low. By the way, if you want my cycle indicator, I can get that for you. Um, just go to, well, there's the, um, the URL right there. So um, I give that away for free, by the way, to the trading community. So what we're looking for is, all right, some low volatility area. Yes, I do want to buy during low volatility, but 
Here's the key, the dollars that are in the details. Not only do I want that, I want this to buy low volatility going into the beginning of a high volatility trend. Very, very important. And the reason this is important is, yes, I do want to buy cheap options, but I want to make money not only on the price of the stock going up, but I want to double dip. I want to make money on the option increasing in price also, not just because of the underlying, but also because the IV pricing being built into the option is also increasing. The volatility, the vega, these are all, you know, variations of volatility and I can't get into all the details of, of the different nuances of ways to measure volatility. So we're just going to look at IV right here. So this way I'm killing two birds with one stone. Okay. I'm getting the price increase on the underlying chart. So uh, the more, you know, if I'm in the money or at the money, then the option price is going to probably go up as long as everything else is aligned. And it, with option pricing, volatility is a huge part of option pricing. So the price of the option itself is going to go up. In fact, if volatility went up and price didn't even go up, then the price of the option could still go up. And implied volatility is just that, implied. It doesn't always correlate directly with the price. And that's the key. So, but when you get both, like I say, kill two birds with one stone. That's when the big money is made. These are the home run trades where you're getting an increase in price with um, two, two stones, two, by the way, uh, I gotta say, um, yeah, I said two birds with one stone. Um, let me make it um, crystal clear here that my administration does not advocate the killing of even one single bird. So got to make that clear. Okay, my friends, so that's the lesson for today. I'll come back with another one, a part two, about selling options and why just selling high IV is not always a good idea, but the details in that as well. So that'll be in part two. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead, subscribe. We've got a lot of good uh, videos coming up. If you have any questions you want to ask, ask them down below. Also, I've got my rubber band trade available for free, still giving that away free to the training community. Just go to rubberbandtrade.com. Uh, That's it, rubberbandtrade.com. How easy is that? And it's a totally free trade setup that I give away to the training community. Anybody who's watching this video, take it. Start making some money with it, absolutely free. Email me any questions you have about it, and let's make you some money before you start um, spending any money.